out of the millions of options that I could have chose for this race go car, I decided to go with a Predator 212 with a quote unquote stage five kit added to it. Now this consists of like a billet connecting rod, a billet flywheel, stainless steel valve kit with 26 pound springs, non-EPA carb with the whole tube setup I'll put up here. And of course, a way more aggressive camshaft, racing spark plug, and then obviously um, exhaust, air intake, but that's basically it. The Predator 212 and all the parts will run you roughly like near $600, I believe. And you're gonna need several tools. Trust me, before you even get this, there's like at least two tools that you really need. If you're gonna do a stage five kit on this engine, you're gonna need a piston ring compressor and you're also gonna need like a really specific socket to um, put the billet connecting rod on. Also, I highly recommend there's this tool that they that they use to push down the valve springs so you can get like um, these two metal pieces in there. I forgot what they're called, but that tool will make your life so much easier. Like I struggled with the valves for so long, trying to push them down with like my thumbs. Like it still hurts to this very day and it's been like two weeks. So definitely recommend getting all the right tools that you need before going ahead with this. Yeah, this video will go through how to like build the engine, um, what tools you need, some tips and advice, um, especially how to troubleshoot the engine um, because sometimes they just don't work when you start it. Like when I first started the engine, it was not working. Into the car. Turns out the issue was, is my valves weren't closing all the way, so they weren't building up pressure. So actually, but yeah, I'll go through how to troubleshoot it, how to build it. I have no experience building engines and I was able to do it. So if you want to put a stage five on a Predator 212, more than likely you can. You're just going to have to watch a lot of YouTube videos, especially from someone like me who doesn't know what they're doing. Like when you watch those YouTube videos of like the pros, they kind of like skip over stuff because they're like so good at it that you know like they wouldn't think to like think about that but for someone who's doing it for the first time you're like this is difficult like some of the stuff you'll find out isn't as easy as it looks in the videos especially putting the piston back in like i mean you have to tighten the shit out of that ring compressor to get the, that piston to go in like it is super difficult i mean sitting there like a good 15 minute process trying to get that in there engine has been secured got a new 212 I'll have to take this thing apart and add all these parts to it. That is a big box. I can't here. Yo, so I got a billet rod, stainless steel valve kit with 26 pound springs, 35 chain, billet flywheel, racing spark plug, and a non EPA carb, and a new aggressive cam. It's covered in grease, so I just kept it in there. And some gaskets, because, you know, I'm probably about to break some, so. Got the full kit. We got a brand new Predator 212 Hemi version, because I believe it's better. Nice. All right, but here, here it is, straight from the box. First thing you're going to want to do if you're doing, like, a stage 5 kit like this is you take off your air intake. There you go. I'll plug that one. There we go. Air intake is off. So that's the first step. Get rid of the air intake. You don't need that. Next step is taking the exhaust off. There you go. Next step done. Exhaust and intake are off. I'm going to take the governor off, which is um, eight millimeter sockets here and here. So I got the, uh, this is basically the whole governor right there I got off. And now I can detach this metal bit from the throttle here, and that spring from the throttle, so eventually I can get this car off. Next step, take the gas tank off, which will be this, uh, so this will be an eight millimeter socket up here, and then there's two extra bolts coming in on the back, so it must be these two ones, which I believe these are 10 millimeters. There'll be a little hose down here. Once the carburetor's off and the gas tank is off, obviously, put that over here real quick. I got a non-EPA carburetor, which these are good because you can tune them. And the setup I got with this is a uh, main tube. It's going to be a 10 millimeter socket here on the very bottom. So you take that off. 
and from there you just need a uh, flat head. The uh, main jet just screws out of there but the e-tube is kind of like placed up in there behind the main jet. There we go. So yeah, you just kind of have to like violently shake it and hit it around to get the uh, e-tube back out of there. So. so you're gonna get a Phillips head and you're gonna take this screw out of here. And I believe this right here is the pilot tube. Okay, yeah, so it just pops out like that. So here's your pilot tube. So now we have all three of the old tubes out. And now from this point, we can install the new tubes which have bigger holes to allow more fuel to enter the engine. So there's our three tubes. So pilot goes in, just like the old one, just get pushed in. They have a nice little clicking noise to them, so that's good. And you can screw this screw back in here because this screw right here controls your idle. It controls how far um, your idle is. So you definitely want to put that back in or your idle is basically going to go back to nothing. Uh, so yeah, for the spark plug, you just pop this cap off. And in the box, they actually give you a uh, tool to take out the spark plug. So that comes in handy. So, we took off the uh, valve cover with these four screws. So, we took the side cover off and we took the um, head off, which is just take the head off using these four bolts right there and the side cover. Obviously, you'll see the screws. It's like six of them. So, to get the rockers off so you can access the springs, there'll be these like little C clips in there. And basically, they're gonna they're gonna be stuck on there, and you kind of have to get like something. <laughs> You get something sharp, you put it in the hole, and you like, you'll press it in there, and it's gonna fly out really fast, so you're definitely gonna wanna try and block it with something. I didn't do it, I just got lucky. There you go, I did that. And it came off. So, like that. And then this this bar right here can just come out, like that. I mean, you're gonna keep track of all your stuff. And then boom, your rocker can come off. And now you can access your springs. Freely. So there we go. Springs from here. I guess you just push them down and like twist it until it comes off. This one just came off. Oh, that's cool. Oh, so here's the springs. old springs, scrawny, and here's the new springs. They're thick and I don't like to compress. That is good. They're thick. Some good old 26s right here. These are already 18 pound springs, so these are already good springs. Putting even bigger ones in though. Because this is going to be a legit build. I'm going to be flying around the neighborhood. <clears throat> going crazy, hitting all the kids in the cul-de-sac. The moms are gonna hate me or love me, hopefully. One easy way to put the new valves in is just putting the head upside down and then just pushing them into place, like a towel or something that's clean, and kind of like stuff it down there to keep the uh, valves from falling back in. So um, when you do take your brand new springs, you put them on like this. Basically, what you're going to need to do when you put the new valves on and put these up, you're going to need to push this down far enough that you can put the, uh, these two pieces on. So it's going to be difficult, so I'm going to have my brother and I both trying it. So. so I found out like a hack to do it on your own. So get, get the thing right here, put it down, and then what you're going to do is you're going to put these two bits in there already. So they're locked into place. It's kind of hard to do. You can see it in there like that, and now if I lift it, they stay in place, so I will do it on my own. So now that the spring's in there, you're gonna wanna gently set this on there and then get like a pole or whatever to press it down. So I'm just using this pole and then press it down and hopefully they'll fall into place. Well, I finally uh, got both of them in. That was about the hardest thing I've ever done in my whole life. So I, I highly don't recommend uh, doing that unless you are prepared to hate yourself or unless you just have the right tool to do it. There's a tool that comes in where you can push those down and get the uh, little two pieces in there. So unless you got that, don't recommend doing this. But spark plugs in, valves are in. Now I just got to put the rest of the components in there and we're good. And then using a pair of pliers like this, you can just um, clamp these like little C-clamps back on. Put these back through the rockers to get them back into place. 
Well, for anyone trying to remove a flywheel without the actual proper tool, you can jam something like a flathead screwdriver in there that stops it from spinning and get a big old torque bar and put your foot down on it to stop it from moving. And you'll finally have enough torque to break the nut. The next step will be to loosen the uh, connecting, the two nuts holding on the connecting rod. And that was not, diff that was not easy at all. I literally had to use this huge bar on this tiny little wrench to pry those things loose to like break them at first. But and now once you get these two bolts out, the back part of the connecting rod will just come out and you should be able to come in here after pushing the uh, piston up and the piston should just slide out like this with the rest of the connecting rod. All right, then the next thing you'll do is you'll take a sharp pick like this and you can come in through here and you'll click off these little rings right here. So these rings will be in there, but you can come in like this and use some leverage and they'll pop out and then you can pop that out. That's what you're trying to do with one hand. It's very oily. There you go. Here's the normal one. And here's the billet one I'm about to replace it with. All right, I finally got the uh, crank out and the uh, old flywheel. All I did was just, I stuck a crowbar in between the old flywheel and I hammered here to like push it on out because it's friction fit in there. So then next thing I did is I took out the low oil sensor by unscrewing these two screws. And now I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue up on this wire that I cut just to Make sure that wire doesn't go anywhere and that we keep a good seal on this engine. All right, then using a flathead and a hammer, you can get the uh, gear off this side, which this gear is only meant to uh, spin the uh, governor. So by taking rid of this, not only do you disable it, but also you save up some weight and you get to get rid of something. So, all right, now the engine's finally ready to be worked on. Everything's out of it. I'm ready to start doing the connecting rod. I was just protecting it because you want to Make sure the engine's as clean as possible, so I gotta get out that bug and all this grime that I got on it. But once you get everything off, you can clean the engine off, make sure everything's as clean as possible before you go on to the next step. All right, once you can uh, get your uh, crankshaft back in there with the key and all that, um, you can take your billet rod and you can put it into the piston and then put the rings back in. And so now the piston is ready to be dropped in. So I finally got the piston inside the engine using this piston compressor at AutoZone. And by the way, these things are not perfect. These adjustable ones are extremely difficult. I mean, you have to tighten the mess out of them. And like, so unbelievable. Because then like you're tightening it so hard, all it wants to do is rotate, not actually, t actually tighten in this Allen wrench. So, I mean, you have to extremely tighten it, oh, but I got that in there and now I'm about to tighten up these two fasteners, which will tighten on the end part of the connecting rod with the engine. All right, so yeah, the uh, stock camshaft is this really small lobe that doesn't come up much. As you can see on this one, the lobes definitely come up a lot higher. It's hard to see, it's a small difference, but it makes, a big impact in the engine. I finally got the uh, timing set with that and I'm pretty sure it goes with the spark plug up. So I got the spark plug in and I got the wires running over here, pinched in through here. So, so far we're getting along. The exhaust is on, air intake is on, gas tank is on. Everything's been connected to where it needs to be. I just got to cut this hose and then add these um, little just air filters real quick to down here and on this one real quick and then this engine is ready to go and I've never been more terrified in my entire life obviously I got to put some uh 10w30 in there and some gas and we're gonna see if this thing will work starting I gotta get gas into the thing into the car.
don't know. I just think there's not. Well, I made such a mess. It's time to clean this entire garage now. Putting all these damn tools up for real. of troubleshooting we figured out why the engine would not start earlier and it was because the valves would not completely close so finally we got this thing to start and soon i'll, I'll have the video out of it driving and all yeah, that but give me credit for that. oh yeah yeah Graham. <laughs> so what happened uh so we were we were pulling the cord a lot nothing was happening so finally he stuck his hand over the exhaust when i pulled the cord and it made a big pop so we, we were like well, it works. It just needed back pressure. It just needed pressure. So we're like, that leads us to believe that the valves just aren't working. The valves weren't fully closing. So, the so I opened up the valve bed. No I realized that I tightened the rockers down too hard on it. So the valve, the springs weren't coming back all the way up like they should. And it works. I mean, it ran beautifully and it was chopping. It was sounded powerful, bro. So yeah, bro, that thing is powerful. Nothing went wrong for like the five seconds it was running, which is good. Cause if you can go five seconds, you spin some oil. But yeah, well, cause we had to do off. the valve cover off. Well, that was fine. So video soon of this thing running, it's gonna be great. Finally got the engine on, got the chain on, got the massive car exhaust on. Uh, last thing I gotta do is just hook up the throttling line and this thing will be ready to go. Whoa, I thought I was gonna be able to ride this thing, but it's a piece of shit. So basically, I got the engine mounted, everything worked, but every time I gave it a little bit of gas, my chain would pop off. And that is because, A, this, this sprocket can move left and right, so I need to get them axle lockers on both sides, so it doesn't do that. But B, is this engine moves around when you throttle it because the engine mount is bad. Basically, I thought two-inch bolts would work, but I guess they were a little too long. They went too far down in and I kind of fucked it up here. But the engine mounts were already fucked regardless because the bolts on the bottom that help you slide it around on the rails, they're like rounded off completely. So now I'm about to drop a fresh 60 on new engine mounts and some like axle lockers or whatever. I don't know, maybe get something to tidy up my throttle since I just kind of fucking zip tied it up there and caught her a day with some tape and I was like, yup, that's safe. See?